You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. You can go and subscribe, cause I be on it right. You ain't bout it, you ain't bout it, you ain't kick on the mic. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic, the podcast all about the Chicago Bears. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. First and foremost, Bears fans, happy Friday to every single one of you guys. And just for the sake that Friday, we are going to do a seven-round Chicago Bears mock draft right here on Kick on the Mic. But today on Kick on the Mic, I'm going to be doing it with a very special guest. It's the Chicago Sports Talk. Michael, how you doing, Michael? I'm doing good, Keith. What's up? What's good, everybody, to Keith's audience real, real like quick? It. I love it. I love the energy you're coming with today. You know, I told you, hey, we need to come with the energy in all these videos. It's going to be a good time. We're going to do a Chicago Bears seven-round mock draft. You know, we're, what, less than a month away from, from the NFL draft. How are you feeling about the Bears going into this draft, Michael? It's quite unfortunate with Justin Fields, but like I said, I wish him nothing but the best, man. But I just hope the Bears can finally once uh, get, hopefully, you know, and this quarterback cycle that we've been going on, like we des we as Bears fans deserve to have, like we should be like the Chiefs fans right now. We should be like <laughs> like those other teams that just like to talk a lot a lot of you know st uh, stuff. Be like, hey, we got our guy, but we get, right now we're keep getting constantly reminded by Packer fans. Right. Uh, yeah. The that that um. The, you ever like there's like there's a video keep um that packer fans created it's called the bears still suck <laughs> i love it but hey hopefully 20th time is a charm for this franchise um hopefully uh caleb williams or jj mccarthy can be that guy uh, that's just a joke bears fans don't take us seriously but what we're gonna do we're gonna you know put on the screen the pff mock draft simulator and i have it you know set to where it's like you know not a lot of randomness it's actually gonna be really realistic and michael and i are gonna go through the seven round chicago bears mock draft so i'm gonna go ahead and put on the screen right now you can still see michael and i on the screen of course we're gonna be controlling the chicago bears so let's go ahead and enter the nfl draft um and obviously you know should we look at trade scenarios michael should we look at different players or should we just hey we're going straight for caleb williams i think everybody is like uh, is like keep you already know the pick you already know the pick you know, I think I'm just trying to stir people up on a Friday. You know, I'm in a really good mood. Um, I'm feeling really good about quarterback Caleb Williams, NFL arm talent, um, elite playmaking ability. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping to the football gods, they love Chicago Bears fans. I am just hoping that Caleb Williams is the guy. <laughs> and, and people, and you have already people saying if Caleb fails, we're, we're a cursed city. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I totally agree. If Caleb Williams doesn't work, the generational prospects, uh, the best we've seen since Andrew Luck doesn't work for the Chicago Bears, the Chicago Bears are probably never going to win. Yeah, yeah. So, like, me and Keith have been, like, like we've been, we, we, we talked about the quarterback controversy between Fields and Caleb. We do not want to talk about Caleb and Arch Manning. Right, that. yeah. And there, there's a lot of Bears content creators that don't want that scenario where in three years, if it doesn't work out with Caleb Williams – then we're talking about Arch Manning, like you said, versus Caleb. When's like, really? We're at this point again? <laughs> yeah, and then I know Manning's going to get the hype because of his last name. Right, exactly. Exactly. So Michael and I are both in agreement. We're going to go ahead and take Caleb Williams with the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. I think that's the obvious pick at this point. And here we go. See, this is where it gets a little bit unrealistic because every time, every single time, Michael, I put up this PFF mock draft simulator. I see Joe Alt there. And obviously, Joe Alt should be a solidified least top six pick in the 2024 NFL draft. But if there is a scenario where Joe Alt is there, do you pull the trigger on Joe Alt? That's um, that's how much you would, uh, you know, view Braxton Jones. Do you view Braxton Jones as a solid starter? But if you don't view him as a solid starter, go with Joe Alt. But obviously... I would take the trade back option just so we can get more draft capital. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So as we're looking at it now, Michael, I mean, if we go back, obviously, you know, Dallas Turner is off the board. Roma Dunze is off the board. Malik Neighbors is off the board. Obviously, my pipe dream of getting Marvin Harrison Jr., he's off the board right now. Uh, so I think at this point, if the draft fell this way, I think it's in the Bears' best interest to look for a trade back partner. So we're going to go ahead, Bears fans, and look. At some maybe some trade back scenarios. We have the Minnesota Vikings. You know, 
damn well, Michael, we are not trading back with the Minnesota Vikings. I don't want to help them out. I'm pretty sure they don't want to help us out. Um, so we're going to go ahead and maybe we should look at the Las Vegas Raiders first. Um, I'm not sure about you, but I'm intrigued by maybe giving them nine, obviously, and then maybe asking for 13, 44, mm, and maybe a day three pick if possible. <laughs> Normally I say try to, you know, squeeze a future first round, but nah. Well, I mean, unless we trade down further, unless like the Rams are – very interested because I saw the Washington. Well, I didn't really see like the fall Washington. I only saw clips. And let me tell you something. Michael Penix impressed me the most. I thought he was going to be a day two pick. Yeah. So regardless who we trade back from, if they're and remember when we traded um, up for Justin Fields, I think uh, three years ago, we traded up to get Fields and we had it like we fall in love with Justin Fields to the point that we gave the Giants a future first round pick. Right. So if if any team like for example the Rams Matthew Stafford obviously is getting up there in age, he's not going to be the long-term solution for them. Right. And they're going to probably look for a Matthew Stafford successor. So in my critical opinion, if they're in love with Michael Penix, they're gonna do ev- they're gonna do everything in their power. Well, not really everything in their power, because that would make sense if we were trading the number one overall pick. But mostly, not like a big haul, but a uh, some similar haul to what we what we got for the right. Yeah, you know, what, what we gave to the Giants for uh, Justin Fields. So basically, you're insinuating right now is that maybe, for example, let's look at the quarterbacks that are on the board still, right? Um, so of course you have Bo Nix still on the board here in this PFF mock draft simulator, Michael Penix, Spencer Rattler. But let's look at these top two options, right? I feel like these are going to be sleeper, possibly first round picks in the 2024 NFL draft, possibly. Um, so maybe there is a team, like you said, like the Los Angeles Rams, that are looking for a successor for Matthew Stafford down the road. So let's go ahead and maybe look. Are they even interested? Yes, the Rams are interested. Would that be an intriguing option for Bears fans to possibly move down 19 to 19? So 10 spots from 9 to 19, and we possibly ask for 19, 52, maybe a third round, or maybe do we try to squeeze out a first-round pick next year? But obviously that said, that trade will not be accepted. So maybe we ask for a second round pick. That's a 57% chance. So we can ask for two first, two second round picks and a first round pick. Would that be intriguing for you, Michael? Yeah, because because the, the thing about that is the Bears are going into next year with about like 10 um, draft uh, picks. Depending what Ryan Poles does, which I don't think – I think Ryan Poles is going to trade back the, the ninth pick for – it's going to be regardless if Rome is there or if the player that he wants. I feel like he's – like this is not Ryan Pace where Ryan Pace trades up, which Keith and I know very well about Ryan Pace. He trade he trades up and then he gets the unnecessarily player that eventually does not work out. But Ryan Poles, from what I know, loves to trade back. He only traded up one time, and that was for Tyreek Stevenson. So – I think even if even if the the best player available is there for him, I think Ryan Poles will definitely trade back. Okay, so you know I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I'm kind of feeling this option. I feel like we can possibly squeeze out more from the Los Angeles Rams, especially if we're trading down ten spots. So I'm gonna just play a little bit here. So we're asking for two second round picks and obviously their first round pick. Maybe we squeeze out the number ninety nine overall. So that's still a top one hundred pick as well. And they said there's still a thirty percent chance for the Bears uh, for the Rams to accept that trade. Should we try this out? All right, all right, let's 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 get it done. Okay, let's see if they accept this trade from the Chicago Bears, and they do. So the Bears land, you know, um, three crucial picks or two crucial picks, um, extra in the 2024 NFL Draft with pick number 52 and 99, and we get a next year second to move down 10 spots, right? So obviously we accept that trade. So now the Chicago Bears in this mock draft, um, on Keek on the mic, are picking number 19, and look at all. Um, the talent still on the board for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, this is a blow that Liatu Latu was picked 17 um, by the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's a guy that if we do trade down, that I would be really high on from UCLA. He's a hell of a pass rusher, uh, but now he's off the board. 
Obviously, there's a lot of Bears fans saying Troy fought to new. Um, the tackle out of Washington was an intriguing option because he has flexibility playing guard and um, left tackle as well. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the draft board. You still have Jerzon Newton, the um, standout defensive lineman out of Illinois. Um, we don't need a cornerback. Maybe Byron Murphy, the second, the defensive lineman out of Texas. Um, there's still that tackle from Georgia. Ooh, here we go, Michael. We still have Jackson Powers Johnson on the board. Who intrigues you the most here? Obviously, Keith, you mentioned this millions of times. Um, the center is the most um, important. Like people say, it's qu we're a quarterback away from competing, uh, but no, we're a center away from competing. That offensive line needs a center, and I don't feel like we need one of the top tier left tackles. But um, we we need competition for Braxton Jones to make sure he doesn't earn the starting job day one. Mm -hmm. So we don't really have we don't really have that center spot. And I've been saying this, even though I love uh, Shelton Coldman, the addition that we got, are we sure he's not the, are we sure he's the long-term answer? So yeah. I rather, I rather get a rookie, mm -hmm. a, a um, rookie that's coming into the NFL than sign because then sign a veteran, because we did that with Lucas Patrick's look how that turned out. We moved Cody Whitehair, and Cody Whitehair can't can't snap a ball right. Right, right. You know, Michael. You know, you bring up solid points. Right. We we keep flip flopping um, the center position, and, and something that can't be neglected. I said it many times here on the platform, right here on Keek on the Mic. Um, and Jackson Powers Johnson is obviously a really intriguing prospect in the 2024 NFL Draft. He's by far the best center in this year's draft class. And if you're if you're able to trade down to 19 and get extra draft capital, not only for this year and next year, but still be able to land a solid center in Jackson Powers Johnson. I think that would be a really intriguing situation for Ryan Poles to get a center for the next 12 to 10 to 12 years. And my point, you brought up uh, Coleman Shelton. He he was actually a pretty decent pickup. He has familiarity with um, uh, the offense. So, and, and what Shane Waldron's going to run has familiarity with it. So that's a good thing. I think for this year, it will be good. But having a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson behind him to groom him, and he can be our long-term starter after this year, is really intriguing to me. So are we both in greens that we're going to take Jackson Powers Johnson sitting out of Oregon here? Yeah, sure. Let's let, let's take him. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take him with the 19th overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft for the Chicago Bears. Really like that pick there. So now here we go. Now we have a second-round pick. Obviously, uh, we did not have a second-round pick going into this year's draft originally um, due to us trading for Montez Sweat. Obviously, we love that Montez Sweat deal now. Um, he's an absolute monster. But now, by trading back with the Los Angeles Rams here in this uh, seven-round Chicago Bears mock draft uh, with Michael, we now have a second-round pick at pick number 52. I think this would be a good time to look for a receiver, don't you think? Um, the only receiver, well, let's go, let's go to receivers because, yeah. because Brandon Rice, I feel like is going to be there in the third round. Right. Right. So when you look at the receivers, you have a uh, Ricky Purcell, the wide receiver out of Florida, Jermaine Burton, wide receiver, Alabama. You have a kid from Washington, two guys from Washington, obviously Jalen McMillan, um, seems kind of intriguing here. Um, obviously, uh, we go down the board and there's a lot of people interested in Brendan Rice out of USC and to pair him with uh, uh, Caleb Williams, obviously, right, uh, from their days at USC. Um, but obviously, you see his rank. I think if you pick him here, you're you're risking that it's a little bit of a reach for a guy like Brendan Rice. So you can you have a choice here. Maybe we can go look at um, edge rusher here, right? See what the edge rushers are looking like. Obviously, we didn't pick an edge rusher at number nineteen because we took you know Jackson Powers Johnson, but we do need another pass rusher alongside alongside Montez Sweat as well. Yeah, I agree. We do need another. We need a. We need a pass rush. Like I, I see people saying that we need. We we need to re-sign Unique and got on a one-year deal. No, that 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 experiment failed, and I was one of the individuals that wanted Unique and Gakwe. So let's go ahead. Um, and look at the addresses. We have Adisa Isaac, the edge rusher out of Penn State. Um, I actually really like his game. Yeah, so we can maybe. go. We we can go ahead and look at his profile a little bit and see if this is the right fit for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, had a really good year in 2023. Um, with nine sacks, four quarterback hits, and 20 quarterback hurries as well. And we take a look at the first look, Michael. Here, obviously, his big big board rank on PFF is at 50. So obviously, he's one of the top 100 players in the 2024 NFL Draft. Stands at six foot four. 254 pounds. Um, and it does say here that Isaac is a very solid edge prospect, first and foremost. He's a stout run defender, even at a low weight. 
His hand placement and leverage are consistent and effective when holding the line of scrimmage, which allows him to rip off blocks to make tackles after setting the edge. His hands are also active when rushing the passer. He loves the club rip move, and he uses it consistently to turn the corner and get around blockers quickly. My biggest issue is with him and um, his stems um, from concerns about his strength due to his lower weight. His burst and pursuit speed aren't elite, but they are good enough for the next level. And, and see, that, to me, that's not big a big concern for me. You know, the, the terms of his speed not being elite, um, obviously at the next level, maybe a strength being a concern. That's why you have strength and conditioning coaches in the National Football League, and maybe this is a guy that they can de develop into a very good edge rusher for the Chicago Bears. How are you feeling about him? Okay, so remember how this defense was playing, uh, was not playing that well until the Montez sweat trade? Right. Yeah, people. Yeah, people. Yannick and Yannick and Gakwe was a, a non-factor those weeks. Demarcus Walker looked like a waste of a signing until so, like this whole defense started to gel after we got Montez Sweat, and sacks were coming in left and right. So regardless if we have Isaac, Isaac, so he is going to be molded in and maybe learn under uh, Montez Sweat, like. These players that were really, uh, you know, gelling it, gelling in is because of Montez's sweat. Because and I and people don't talk about this. I feel like there could be um, plays where we can see Javon Dexter be a part of the edge rusher because I he, he's really that fast. I mean, I, I, I'm if I'm a quarterback, I would be scared of Javon Dexter in my opinion. Yeah, and you're you're absolutely right. The Montez sweat effect is is truly real, and obviously you're not expecting a decent ice to come in and be the guy right away. You still have Demarcus Walker, obviously Montez sweat. You have Dominique Robinson coming into the fold as well. I mean, like you mentioned, you have guys like Javon Dexter that have the ability from their defensive line position to create generate pressure from the middle up the middle as well. So I would be fine with bringing this guy in and grooming him to be a really good edge rusher for the Chicago Bears, right? But he also would probably make an instant impact because of the Montez sweat effect. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead. I think we're both in agreement here, Michael, that we're going to take a decent Isaac, the edge rusher out of Penn State. So let's go ahead and take him with pick number 52 in the 2024 NFL draft. And, and here we go. Now we're in round four, right? Or round three. My bad. My apologies. Round three, pick 11 here, pick number 75 overall. Now this is the good point part to go maybe see if Brendan Rice is still available. Are you in agreement with that? Yeah. I mean, I, I to be honest, I, I would want to trade back, though. You would be interested in trading back and maybe hoping that he is still there? Yes. See, to me, I've always said that even though it may be a little bit of a reach in round three to take a guy like Brendan Rice, but I feel like his ceiling is pretty high for the National Football League. And, and for example, just like we said about Adisa Isaac not ha having to come in and be the guy, the same thing goes for Brendan Rice. He would be a very good wide receiver, three or four option for the Chicago Bears. You have DJ Moore, Keenan Allen. Right. So he wouldn't have to come in and be the guy right away. It's some a guy that can come in and make plays here and there for the Chicago Bears um, and, and groom him into something special. I, ag I, I agree with what you're saying, but the difference between the Montez sweat thing, because I really like the Keenan Allen addition, the fact that we had to give up a fourth. There's two things that concern me about Keenan Allen. One, his health two, his age. Because we have yet to sign him. So who knows if he's the potential number two beyond DJ Moore. So the reason why I say go get a guy like Brandon Rice is because there people were saying that he was a terrible receiver for uh uh Caleb Williams last year. He wasn't good, he wasn't really good. But he was just maybe uh, he was middle of the, he middle of the pack. But my evaluation on him is he's a very good number two, but he would be a good he would be a number one on certain teams. But in his, I think he has potential to be the num uh, the number two beyond behind DJ Moore. And the reason why I say that is because well, you just heard me with the Keenan Allen stuff because those two things, even though Keenan Allen is good when he's healthy. Keenan has an injury history that we that me that we we should know about. Yeah, he he could be a good uh, receiver, but at the same time, outside of Keenan Allen, if he goes down, who do you trust? Tyler Scott, Valus jo Valus Jones Jr. You saw how Valus Jones Jr. does when he's targeted deep. 
Right, exactly. And you're you're definitely right about that. When I look at Brendan Rice's numbers though, um, especially in 2022 and 2023, I see I see some consistency, right? 39 catches um in 2022, followed up with 45 catches in 2023. Um, obviously at 611 yards in 22, and then 23 followed up with 791 yards. And obviously in 2023, the production in terms of touchdowns went from 12 and then obviously in 2022 he had four so went from four to 12 so obviously it was one of Caleb Williams go-to targets and rather you take Brendan Rice or maybe like later on in the NFL draft take a guy like Taj Washington I'm the little speedster out of USC I think it would be really smart to pair him with one of his guys from USC so I'm not sure about you Michael I I am okay with reaching here and and taking Brendan Rice because I feel like the ceiling um it could be really rewarding for the Bears yeah I, 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 I totally, I totally agree. Yeah. Even though I do get your, I do get your opinion on like, okay, maybe we can trade down, get a couple more draft picks. I just feel like you don't want to risk it. He is there in round three. I think the ceiling is high enough to take a guy like Brendan Rice. I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on Brendan Rice in round three here. And here we go. Now we're moving on to our second round three pick due to our trade back with the Los Angeles Rams earlier in the video. And, and now here, here's the difficult part. When you get into the later rounds, um, you look you look at the Chicago Bears needs, right? We obviously addressed the quarterback. We addressed the wide receiver. Um, we addressed what? The edge rusher position. Is this a good time to maybe look at a guard death, like maybe offensive line steal? Um, should we look at defensive line how are we feeling here oh the, i mean t- oh man this is keith <laughs> this is so tough but um i do want to say this and i want to give nate davis one more year yeah before we come to terms if that was a waste of a if that was a waste of a signing so i do think that we do need somebody just in case the Nate Davis thing does not work out. But the, the number, but the million dollar question is who, who, um, who, uh, right now intrigues you because I'm seeing the big board. I'm seeing one of the top guards from South Dakota state. Yeah. The, 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 I don't know if you, uh, or, um, have done you know any scouting on on him i I just want to see if he would be a good potential successor for uh nate davis yeah here's the thing here's the first thing i look at michael when i'm doing my evaluation on these guards you know obviously i look at athletic ability um obviously that's that's very big when you're looking at a guy um, like ryan poles and like his evaluation he likes athletic offensive linemen i mean look at his snaps by alignment here um all his snaps have been at left guard in his college career um but doesn't mean he can't make the transition to right guard you know obviously um tevin jenkins has done it many times with the chicago bears um obviously you look at his three years at south dakota to state looks like he's been solid right only two sacks given up in his three-year career um with south dakota state so i do like that um obviously the hurries um year by year it looks like he improved um in 2021 had eight hurries allowed um 2022 2021 eight hurries allowed 2022 had five and then 2023 had three hurries allowed so i really like that um tim we can always look at his size six five 315 pounds is, is massive size right <laughs> for for an nfl guard so i do like that we can look at the analysis obviously there's not analysis on every guy but this, this that's how i usually evaluate these guys and especially when i'm doing these mock drafts are so hard sometimes most of the time when i get to these rounds um i usually take best player available and i would like to possibly take another guard to to get more depth i do understand that we did trade for ryan bates from the buffalo bills give up a fifth round pick to bring him over he has that position versatility as well to play center and guard so obviously you have that as well but it would be smart to continue to bring guards here and here for for competition purposes and like you said if nate davis doesn't work out maybe this guy turns into something right yeah because i think even though people say that nate david like nate davis was I don't know if it was because of that that thing that he was going through, the 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 thing that that happened earlier in the season. But it's becoming more of a bad uh, signing, and I'm just wanting to give him one last chance before we decide to pull the plug on him. Yeah, no, n- yeah, no worries at all. I do- I totally get that, Michael. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to select Mason McCormick, guard out of South Dakota State. I do like that pick. So now here we go. Um. We only have one more pick in round four, and I'm totally fine with right here taking the best player available as well. 
Um, don't think we should pull a trigger <laughs> on a uh, on a running back, <laughs> or maybe you can look at a safety because um, you know the same thing. You look at Kevin Bayard, for example. He is up there in age. How how much? How many more years does he have playing football? Right? Would this be smart? Maybe bringing in another safety in here. Um, I know we have Elijah Hicks, our draft pick from a couple of years ago, that they're maybe grooming him to be the next safety um, alongside uh, Jaquan Brisker. Who knows? Uh, when, when when we look at our options here. Maybe another edge rusher, maybe would intrigue us. How are we feeling here, Michael? This is what Ryan Poles does a lot on day three. And I think me and Keith can come to an agreement that Poles loves, loves to trade back a lot on day three. He turned five draft picks when in Ryan Pace's mess, and he turned that into 11 draft picks. Yeah. And then the following year, I don't know how many trade draft picks we got from that year, but I think it was seven, maybe eight. I have to go back and check, but um, he he does, he does loves to do a lot of trade backs a lot day three, and this has been a thing with the Chicago Bears, even in the Ryan Pace era. era we always find late round picks. Eddie Jackson, Mo- Mooney was good until this year. Um, I'm trying to think uh like uh james james daniels uh basically we uh always our good players always come from later round even uh, terry cohen i for, i forgot about him terry cohen right so this i do think the if i'm ryan poles i i trade back i do i do what i keep doing and trade back on day three you know, I, I I would agree with you on that too. Just for the purpose of this video, though, I think I'm just gonna take the best player available here. Just for the purpose of this video, I know realistically he may trade back um in round four to maybe get more draft picks. But you know, obviously when he talked to Kevin Fishbane of the Athletic the other day, he didn't seem too concerned about possibly getting more picks. Right, all avenues are open, but he seems like content with possibly even taking the four best players available in the 2024 NFL draft. Because his reasoning is, he says. In general circumstances, most teams in a three-year window get 21 draft picks. In a three-year window under Ryan Poles, the Bears have selected through the 2024 draft, once it's over, 25 players. So he said, we're still ahead of the game. And when you look at next year, the Bears will have, what, 10 or so draft picks as well. So to me, I think that's his mindset. And a a guy, I I know I didn't say, I know I said this, Bears fans, I know I said I didn't want to take a running back here. But wouldn't it intrigue you to get another USC guy that's comfortable with Caleb Williams here and Marshawn Lloyd? To be honest, I feel I like Khalil Herbert. I like Roshan Johnson. I feel like the Bears need like a big, like, because we had the Thunder and Lightning. That means uh, Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen. DeAndre Swift, you know, he's a bit short. You know, I don't feel like he's that. uh, big like Jordan Howard was I feel like the Bears need that you know big big guy as as a, as the running back so the million dollar question is do you because because we have like we don't need a running back we we like we have like three running backs so yes. maybe we add Martin uh, Marshawn Lloyd and depending how tall he is depend like I said run, you you don't want like I said this league is not becoming towards running backs, which is why the running backs um you know like uh, Derrick Henry like De- like Derrick Henry is getting paid I think less now because of the simple fact that running backs are not important anymore now these days. Like you could see like a seven you could see a seventh round pick and you take a running back and that running back turns out to be. And a thousand, uh, and a thousand rushing yards. So, in my critical opinion, I think we do need that big bot, that big guy as a running back. So, that depends how much you value Marshawn Lloyd. Yeah, here's the thing. We look at Marshawn Lloyd. He's definitely not a big back. He's five nine, uh, two hundred and ten pounds. Um, but you know, the bottom line here on the PFF uh, simulator says Lloyd has starting caliber NFL caliber athlete. He has that ability to be a starter in the national football league. It just seems like 
He just needs to improve his vision. Um, and they said the big thing is his athletic ability. Um, his burst, agility, and long speed um, are well above average for the NFL level. I do like that. Maybe he can offer some value as a special teamer early on in the Chicago Bears career. I just know that most NFL teams, they always pick a running back. It seems that way. Like there's always a lot of good running backs in the later rounds. Um, I'm okay with taking a, a chance on him. And I'm pretty sure Caleb Williams would vow, uh, vow, uh, vow for him too. Be like, hey, let, let, go, get, go ahead and get my boy. He's outstanding. So I'm going to go for the purpose of this video, make it fun, make it interesting. I think we should go ahead and take a chance on Marshawn Lloyd. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take a chance on Marshawn Lloyd here. And that will be our final draft pick. Obviously, I just took the best players available on the board here on this, on today's episode of Keek on the mic. And now let's go ahead and grade our Chicago Bears. Seven, seven okay. I, I do. I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, the, that Jackson Powers Johnson grade, that's cap. That's yeah, cap. there's no way that's a D plus. I, I call cap on that one too. A D plus for Jackson Powers Johnson. After a trade back is is crazy. We get an A for the Adisa Isaac pick. We get a C plus for Brendan Rice, which I figured. Um, we get a B for Mason McCormick, the guard out of South Dakota State. And look at what I tell you, Michael. An A minus grade for our boy Marshawn Lloyd, halfback out of USC. So that was a good pick. But I'm still confused by that by that uh, D plus for Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah, um, that depends if he could be that. Uh, thunder and like I said, when we had Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen, that was a big right. thunder and lightning. Right, for sure, for sure. I totally, I totally get it. But Michael, I, I do appreciate you coming on. Um, and Bears fans, go ahead and and give us a grade for our seven round Chicago Bears mock draft on today's episode of Keek on the Mike. Let us know down below in the comment section. Obviously, PFF gave us an A grade, so give us a grade down below in the comment section. I do appreciate every single one tuning in. Um, as always, make sure you continue to hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms, and make sure you share this episode of Keek on the Mic with every single Bears fan that you know. But other than that, we're back for our all-new Bears podcast right here on Keek on the Mic. And as always, to every single one of you guys, Bear down. Bear Go down. ahead. And, that's right. That's right, Michael. Bear down to you guys. See you guys later. You've been listening to Keek on the Mic, a podcast all about the Chicago Bears. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Thanks, guys, and bear down.